I guess my screen is visible. Uh, and guys, am I audible? Yes, yes you are audible. And before you start, uh, I will give a brief introduction. Uh, students, uh, he is uh, our uh, alumni. He, he, uh, he is a Harish Rajendran. Uh, he passed uh, 2019 uh, 23 batch. Okay. Uh, he is a software development engineer, uh, full stack, and he is working in Zogo Corporation. Many students have met him as well as uh, many students may have uh, still interaction with the Harish. Uh, Harish uh, is a good coder as well as uh, a strong student, okay, uh, as well as I saw uh, in uh, many things that he um, has taken uh, his uh, own, own decisions as well as a strong decisions uh, because he has got that much potential. Uh, uh, so similarly, you also need to have uh, the guts uh, to face the interview as well as the well preparation to face the interview. So we called him uh, for taking a session uh, uh, on full stack. So immediately accepted our invitation and came as well as uh, he has taken uh, uh, such a time uh, as well as he inquired about the company and he has uh, asked us uh, what are the things uh, to be um, given for you, uh, which will be useful for you. Everything he asked um, to me, okay, he, uh, himself, as well as uh, he prepared the coding Okay, he sat and uh, done all the solutions also for you as well as uh, he has posted uh, the coding as well as uh, the PPT along with the instructions, uh, whatever is uh, required for today's session um, in this uh, GitHub uh, itself. So the GitHub link also he has already given to me and I have posted this to the placement group. Okay, I told you about that. Okay, so please kindly utilize this session and whatever doubts you have, you can clarify with him. Okay, with the PPT and uh, the coding, whatever he has posted, you can also do the execution along with him as well as get some idea with him so that the session will be useful. Thank you, Harish. Uh, you can now start, Ma. Yeah, sure, ma'am. So I'll be uh, taking the seminar about full stack development today and uh, myself, Harish Rajendran, has... Um, um, Lalita Mam said, and uh, today's agenda will be uh, I'll be talking about an introduction to full stack development, and then we'll be more moving on to front end basics and then uh, basics of ba back end development. Uh, basically, uh, the things that you should know whether if you want to become a uh, front end developer or a back end developer, if not, you can just uh, become a full stack developer, which we'll be covering later. And then I'll be giving a gist about database essentials what are the two types of databases, and what are the differences between them, and what are the uh, situations in which you can opt for a specific database. And then uh, I myself um, um, have coached a few people and I have taken a, a seminar in Zoho itself. What I um, observed is uh, college students uh, don't know anything about APIs. They don't uh, have a knowledge about how to design an API or how to test an API. So I decided uh, to uh, make a session uh, on exclusively on API. So I included uh, API design. So in the API design, you'll be uh, learning a lot about uh, creating and consuming APIs and how to test the APIs and what are the tools that are required to uh, create such APIs. And I'll be sharing you the documentations uh, which you need to go through in order to become a professional API developer. And then uh, I'll be exposing you to the tools and techniques in the in day-to-day -day life. And then we'll be jumping into a live demo. The live demo will be like, uh, I'll be sending you the uh, GitHub link where you can clone the repo repository along with me. And then you can uh, execute the full stack application by yourself, uh, which is connected to the database and the front end is also done. Um, I just uh, created yesterday uh, uh, the codes and it is available online for free and you can also utilize them. And uh, I'll just uh, go through the code uh, line by line I'll, and I'll explain uh, how to create a backend and how to connect it with the front, front end and how I created those APIs in an industry structured manner. Uh, this is the today's agenda. And then we'll uh, moving on to the QA where you can ask anything about um, uh, full stack development or uh, if you have any uh, queries regarding um, inter uh, interview pre preparation or if you have any fears or what to prepare, you can ask those things in the end. And uh, I'll start with the introduction to full stack development. Um, and guys, are you with me? Uh, or uh, am I going at a full speed or should I uh, 
uh, paste on myself. Students can respond to him. Can someone uh, respond whether I have to slow down or uh, something? No, no, it's it's good now. Yeah, okay, fine then. Um, I'll start with the introduction to full stack. Uh, here, um, uh, this is the uh, software development life cycle when it comes to uh, uh, creating a full stack application. Uh, the first two, uh, two steps you don't have to worry about, but I'll just give you a brief introduction. First thing is design. Uh, this thing will be carried out by the dis uh, designers. Uh, there will be a, a complete uh, separate uh, department in order to create designs. The designers use uh, uh, tools like Figma and Adobe XD. If you are going to become a, a front-end developer, you should know how to uh, just use these things. You don't have to build anything using those uh, tools. You just have to use those things and then you, to, you, you have to uh, extract the colors and dimensions from those uh, applications. So you don't have to worry about the design. And next comes the UI part. Uh, UI is nothing but it is how the uh, web, web application will look like. Uh, it is just the bare bone on how it looks. Uh, as you can see in the uh, slide itself, there is something uh, spinning around and the colors are uh, um, uh, uh, like uh, they complement each other, right? So these things uh, the UI developer will do. The UI developer will purely code only HTML and CSS and they will use some CSS libraries uh, such as uh, SCSS or compile CSS or bootstrap and uh, tailwind and many more. So you don't have to worry about these also. So uh, next comes the real full stack development. So the real full stack development starts from being a full uh, front end developer and then uh, creating and consuming APIs and then creating the backend and then you'll be uh, connecting the backend with the database. So these four are the core part of a full stack developer. And then you should know about uh, other two uh, things that is testing and deployment. You just have to be aware of these things, but you should, uh, you are not required to uh, know or have any knowledge on testing and deployment. So testing is basically if you create an application, the testers will test the application, whether it will break in uh, any such scenarios. Um, so uh, usually uh, what happens is in uh, testing is done by a, a department called as quality and assurance in so this team will be present in every uh, software development companies, uh, every standard soft, uh, software development companies. So uh, what they will do is they'll provide some test cases, they'll do some uh, automation and they'll uh, test the, uh, the APIs that you have uh, created. And then uh, the deployment. Deployment will be usually taken care by uh, someone known as uh, DevOps engineers. So DevOps engineers will take care of uh, everything. Um, that you have coded up and they'll be hosting it in a separate environment such as uh, uh, kubernetes or aws or uh, heroku or azure and so on so when you want to become a full stack developer these are the four areas that you need to worry about and you should be strong in these four areas and you don't have to worry about design and ui and testing and development you don't have to worry about these so uh, with this uh, brief introduction i'll just move on to what is a front end and what you should know uh, when you become a front-end developer. Uh, and before moving on, I'll give you uh, an, a, a quick example of what API is because later we'll be uh, designing API and we'll be consuming those APIs. So you guys should have a, uh, uh, a bad understanding of what an API is. Uh, let's say uh, you're uh, going to a hotel and uh, there are some um, uh, vegetables available and those vegetables are data. And you have to do something with the data, right? So when you cook something, then the chef is the backend engineer. He is just uh, cooking. He is doing something with the data and he is preparing some food. So then uh, not every chef uh, will be preparing the food and he'll be uh, uh, directly serving to the client. He'll be giving it to a waiter and then the waiter will serve the uh, food to the client. So let's say a client is ordering some burger. So this is called as request. The request is given to uh, the waiter and the waiter will inform the uh, chef to uh, make a burger. So this is called as an API call from the client to the backend. So the, the chef will uh, look for the uh, required ingredients like the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 searching for the vegetables and uh, the buns and all. And then he'll be preparing and doing some operations on the data and he'll be preparing the burger and he'll hand it over to the API back and then the API, 
which is the waiter, uh, will take those uh, burger from the back end to the client, and then client enjoys the meal, uh, which is the front end application. So this is the basic uh, overview of what an API is. API is nothing but uh, it is an entity that carries the data from the back end to the front end and front end to the back end. So I, I guess. You you guys have a slight idea of what an api is uh, if you guys any have uh, if you guys have any doubt on apis just uh, uh, put it in the chat or if i can uh, proceed just let me know okay uh, i got one chat uh, can i proceed or you guys have any doubts on apis Yeah, sure then. Um, moving on to the next slide, uh, I'll teach you the front-end basics, what are required to uh, know in order to become a front-end developer. The first thing, as I already talked about, the first thing is HTML and CSS. HTML is the bare bone. Uh, it is like the uh, structure of a website. Let's say uh, there is a box and then inside this box, there is an image, right? So you will be adding this box inside a div tag. And then inside this, you will add an image tag. So you know that inside this only, the image is present. So that is called the HTML. And then CSS is nothing but uh, having a transparency in here and uh, adding borders here. Uh, it is completely used for uh, styling your website. So this is the front end that you should know when you are uh, becoming a complete uh, uh, beginner. And then moving on. Uh, we'll move on to uh, uh, JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is the language uh, that is used both in backend and also the frontend. JavaScript is basically used to uh, create interactivity. Let's say uh, something is floating in the screen. Uh, you can see this is uh, spinning, right? Uh, these are all achieved by JavaScript only. So you can do something else like if you click a button, something should happen, right? Uh, that is called interactivity, clicking or uh, hovering your mouse or uh, let's say you are typing something and you have to do some operations uh, based on that. Uh, for those uh, specific um, reasons, you can use uh, JavaScript. And then um, every single website is made up of something known as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But uh, you might have uh, came across some uh, buzzwords like React, Angular, or Light, uh, some frameworks, right? Um, I'll tell you about what a framework is. Framework is nothing but it is a wrapper around the JavaScript. For example, you are writing uh, 20 to 30 lines of code, but it is already present the framework and you can just call the function that is provided by the framework. So the most famous framework that is available is React and now it is evolving into Next.js. Next.js is uh, uh, now just uh, rolled up into uh, server-side components also, uh, which I'll cover later. And uh, yeah, interactivity, you should definitely know JavaScript no javascript uh, i'll namaste javascript you can just uh, search it in youtube and uh, there will be a playlist of around 29 videos i guess uh, if you watch those videos you will uh, definitely become an expert in javascript um, because there will be a lot of uh, information about javascript uh, for example i'll i'll tell you just a gist of what you learned uh, there is something called closures and then hoisting and uh, or DOM traversals and uh, what is uh, execution queue and all. So definitely, if you want to become a front-end developer, you, you have to go through the playlist. I'll share the link also uh, later uh, in the later part of the session. And then uh, uh, we, we have covered about uh, HTML and CSS and then JavaScript is done. And uh, later, uh, we, we, we are going to know about what is the fetch or Axios. So let's say you want to get some data from someone else. Let's say um, um, uh, you're ordering something from Zomato, but you want to uh, show those uh, uh, order in your uh, separate website. So for that, you have to make a API call. API call is nothing but, uh, as I said, it is the waiter that uh, gets the burger from the back end to the front end, right? So what you will do is you will do something known as fetch request or Axios request. I'll show you the live demo uh, in the end. And uh, now I'll give you a hint of what fetch and what is Axios and why Axios is preferred over fetch. 
So fetch is a method that is provided by uh, a browser itself. It is supported in all the browsers and it is uh, only accessible using JavaScript. And fetch is nothing but you have to mention a link. And if you uh, give a, a method uh, name that is get post or delete or put request, it will get the data from uh, whatever link that you have mentioned and it will get the data from wherever that you have mentioned and then it will serve it to you. So this is uh, what fetch is. Uh, and this is the basic method that is used to, in order to get data from database or get data from third party URLs and all. And there comes Axios. When you get something from uh, using fetch, what happens is uh, usually uh, if the error handling is not done properly in the backend, uh, the front end will not be able to pass the response. Uh, let's say only your browser supports uh, input stream and you give some XML uh, kind of uh, on the backend and it won't be able to resolve it using fetch. So uh, uh, that's why we move into a library called Axios. Axios is a wrapper library that is written over the fetch library. Uh, Axios is nothing but uh, it is um, an advanced version of fetch. Uh, if you want to get some uh, data, but even the, if the data is broken or incorrect, Axios will resolve those uh, data and it will do the error handling for yourself. Uh, so if someone in future asks you uh, what is Axios means, just tell them it is a wrapper library to get data from the backend. So I guess uh, uh, up till this, the front end basics got over. And uh, if you want advanced uh, uh, front end uh, questions, you can just post it in the Q&A. And uh, I'll move on to backend basics. And before that, if you have any doubt in what I explained, uh, you can just post it here. Okay, fine. Then uh, I'll go to the back end basics. Uh, as we have seen uh, what to do in the front end, we just uh, looked at what HTML and CSS is and uh, what is JavaScript and why it is used and uh, how uh, how to get uh, uh, get or put a API request. Now here in the back end basics, uh, definitely you are getting a data from somewhere, right? That somewhere is the back end. So in the backend, you have to uh, give those data using these protocols. There are basically four protocols available. I have mentioned only three here because SOAP is not used uh, industry-wide. Uh, that's why I didn't mention it. Okay, uh, there are three types of uh, three types of protocol that is used uh, industry-wide. That is REST protocol and then um, uh, GraphQL and then gRPC. REST is known as a representational state transfer. Uh, which means you can uh, share data from one part to another. So here, if you mention uh, endpoint, you will get a bunch of data. That That is uh, how REST works. Uh, let's say you want only ID and name and email from the backend, but you cannot mention it specifically, right? So for that only, we use a GraphQL. If someone asks you what is a GraphQL means, just tell them uh, it is a REST-based uh, um, it is a REST-based technology where we mention what kind of data we want in what format we want, and we get the same formatted data back from the backend. So that is about uh, GraphQL. And there comes the gRPC. gRPC is a latest technology that works with uh, TypeScript. Uh, um, I'll, I'll give you a basic uh, overview of what a gRPC is. Let's say you are giving a request to the back and your backend throws an error, you will get the error in the front end, right? So that is uh, easy. Uh, that is about REST and GraphQL. But when you implement gRPC, your backend and front end are already connected together. So while typing the code itself, you will get the error. Uh, I'll, I'll make it clear that when using REST, if you are executing something, you will get error. But in gRPC, when typing something, Will get error so that is an advanced version of uh, api and how uh, you can use the backend api and uh, there is one forgotten one that is a soap based api soap based api is nothing but everything that is transferred is in the form of xmls uh, xml is nothing but it is a format that is uh, similar to html you can say yeah and then uh, there comes the backend 
Backend is something that is written with plenty of languages such as Python, Java, and Node.js, and uh, Ruby on Rails, Rust, C, C++. Uh, there, is, uh, there are plenty of languages that you can create a backend with. So backend is nothing but you do all your business logics here. Uh, for example, let's say uh, someone is buying, uh, uh, buying a book from your bookshop. Okay. Uh, they have 100 rupees in their wallet and the book costs 200 rupees. If they uh, make a request, what you should do is you should uh, get the data from the database, whether he have uh, enough uh, amount of money or not. If not, uh, then you have to sub subtract his uh, wallet amount and the book amount and you'll uh, show the rest of the amount, whether it is uh, greater than zero or not. If it is greater than zero, then you'll proceed with the transaction. Or if it is lesser than zero, you'll throw error that insufficient balance or something else. Okay, right? Uh, this is what a backend is. Backend is uh, where you only write your uh, business logic. And uh, one thing to mention, you should not write your business logic in front end because uh, front end is easily manipulated by using uh, something known as uh, developer tools. Uh, I'll open the developer tool in front of your eyes and I'll uh, show you a live demo itself. Uh, on how it is uh, becoming vulnerable when you do your business logic in the front end. And whenever someone asks you uh, what to do, uh, where to do your business logic, uh, definitely tell them that you should do your business logic only in the back end. Uh, is that clear? Yeah, okay. Then uh, there comes the database. Uh, I'll, I'll cover uh, briefly about database here. And the next slide is uh, only about databases. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, database is nothing but, uh, let's say, uh, the, the hotel uh, is a chef and the chef want to fetch some vegetables, right? Uh, but uh, what if all the vegetables are present in the same bag itself? It will be difficult to pick up the tomatoes only. Have a basket for tomato and another basket for onions, it will be easy for you to pick uh, whatever you want. So this is uh, basically about the database. And uh, once again. Okay, um, uh, this is basically about databases. Uh, database is a place where the data gets stored and it is uh, used only to uh, retrieve efficiently and to store efficiently. And uh, the next slide, okay. Here I'll be teaching you about uh, the two types of databases that is uh, uh, present industrial standard and are well used and there is a third type of database which i don't want to cover but i'll just give you a hint uh, about it and here we are going to discuss about uh, sql and no sql uh, when it comes to well, everything structure you have to create something called schema schema is nothing but let's say you have a table and you uh, let two tables and two tables by as a field called id and this ID is called as primary key and a foreign key. And uh, this is how an SQL uh, table structure will be right. Uh, and uh, this is called as a schema. And uh, if, if you want to create a table in SQL, you should go with a fixed structure and you should create a schema. Uh, you have to build a home, but you cannot build it directly. You have to build the architecture first. Only then you have to build the home, right? So this is, uh, that is how the SQL tables work. Uh, it is in a fixed structure and everything that is present is in the table format. The example tables are MySQL and PostgreSQL. And you use something called as queries in order to query these tables. The queries uh, will be in the format like select star from table name or create table and then uh, the column names and all. And uh, you don't have to worry uh, if you don't understand these. I have uh, live sessions where I will show you the queries itself. So don't worry about it. And then uh, when it comes to uh, no SQL, it is flexible structure. You can insert whatever you want, wherever you want. Uh, which means everything is in the JSON object. Like uh, uh, let's say you have a name known as Harish. And then you have this details uh, inside the name. Uh, let's say name Harish and then age uh, colon uh, 21 and then passed out year 2023 and all. You can store it uh, however flexible you want. And uh, the famous database that are uh, present in NoSQL is MongoDB and DynamoDB. Uh, I'll show you the example if you don't know the structure. Uh, yeah, this is the real-time example of how, how an SQL table will look like. 
see uh, the ID will be present. This is called as a primary key and this should be unique and it should present for almost all the tables and it is recommended to have a primary key. Uh, if someone asks you in an interview, what is a primary key? Tell them that it is a key or it is a column that is present in a data table and it is it is used to uniquely identify a column uh, a row in the table. For example, you are given a number eight and you have to identify a column. You can just uh, search for the ID eight and you can just return this column. So that is uh, what is pre what is called as a primary key. And if someone key, let's say there is another uh, table present and this table is a child table of that one. And if you delete this one, you want to delete that one also. For example, let's say you are creating an uh, account in Amazon and you are making uh, 20, 30 purchases. The 30 purchases will be there in a ta separate table known as a purchase table. And you will be having a table known as user table. And in the purchases table, my 20 purchases will be present. Here, my user ID is will be a foreign key to the purchase ID there. So whenever the user deletes his account, the purchase table should delete all the entries that this specific user has done. So that is why a foreign key is used. And uh, it is, uh, this is a very famous interview questions. Uh, even uh, Amazon, Google, uh, and Zoho also ask these type of questions. Just uh, understand what is a primary key, key and why it is used. Uh, I hope you got that. And moving on to NoSQL, uh, this is the structure that I was uh, talking about. You can place whatever you want, wherever you want. See, here the customer ID is some number and order items is an array. See, there is no structure, right? Suddenly, there is a number and uh, ironically, there is an array present. And inside the array, there is objects present. You can see the flexibility, right? As I said, it is flexible and it contains JSON object. And this is called as JSON object, uh, if you don't know. And uh, I guess you guys have a, um, I have got the uh, essentials of what a database will look like and what is the two types of databases. And I I was about to tell you the third type of databases in, uh, across uh, used in the industry, but it is used in few uh, specific uses that is known as graph database. So if someone asks you, uh, what are the types of database? Just don't tell them SQL and no SQL. Tell them there are three types of database, SQL, no SQL, and graph database. And what is a graph database? Which means um, I cannot uh, show you the structure like this because the structure itself is in 3D format. It will be like this only. Here, the data will be present and data the specific data will be mapped to two or three or even four uh, dimensions data. Uh, for example, element, uh, some thing on Facebook and someone replay to that comment and someone else replay to that comment. And if you click on that uh, profile picture, it gets you to his uh, profile, right? And it will show you his uh, related friend. If you click on the related friend, it will again show you the his related friends. So it is in the form of graph or uh, achieving this type of complex uh, web like structure, graph databases are used and it is device. But but it is used in specific use cases. And uh, uh, that's about uh, databases and types of databases. If you have any doubts, just post it in the chat. Or if I want to go ahead, please let me know. Guys, um, can I proceed? Or if you have any doubts, uh, just let me know. Uh, examples of graph database. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll give you uh, some other example. Um, actually, um, okay, wait. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, if you can see this thing, uh, see uh, that uh, Jennifer is a friend. Uh, Jennifer likes graphs and uh, Melissa also gra uh, likes graphs. And Jennifer is friends with Melissa. 
uh, you can create complex relationships like this. For example, let's say uh, Jennifer is also a friend with uh, Sally and she is also a friend with uh, Anne and Anne's like applications. So if you want to query something, uh, you can just uh, mention it as Jennifer, uh, who is a friend of Jennifer and she also likes applications. If you uh, search like that means you can get Anne. So to query these things, you definitely use something known as GraphQL. Uh, Graph, uh, I'll, I'll show some examples about GraphQL later in the... Um, for now, uh, I guess uh, this is enough for uh, giving an example on... Uh, if you still have a doubt, please post it in the QA session. Ah, okay. Uh, you asked about Graph Database Providers. Okay. There are uh, two providers uh, which are uh, known worldwide. The first one is Neo4j. Uh, you can just uh, type. So, yeah, uh, this guys, these two guys are providing with uh, a graph databases. You can just uh, import your schema you can import import your uh, no sql and sql uh, data into these websites and they will create a, a graph db for you um yeah i guess uh, this uh, clarifies your doubt mm, can we move on yeah sure okay uh, this is the core part that I want to teach you guys because uh, I have conducted uh, a workshop in Zoho. Uh, people from uh, different colleges, uh, I guess Venkateshwara, RM, uh, REC, RET, these college uh, people have uh, attended the session. Uh, and uh, one thing that I uh, noticed it that uh, most of the people, uh, let's say 99% of people don't know what is an API and uh, how to use Postman. So, but uh, this is surprising because uh, in industry, every day you will use uh, Postman in order to test your uh, APIs. Uh, if you want to become a backend developer, you should need, you should know how to use Postman. If you want to test whether the backend developer gave uh, proper APIs or not, you should use Postman. So this is something that we use uh, in our day-to-day -day life. And I want you guys to be aware of uh, what an API is and how to design an API. Uh, this is not uh, actually covered in uh, definitely in our syllabus. Uh, API will be taught, uh, but I don't think that uh, how to create an API and how to design an API will be taught or not. Uh, yeah, uh, first I'll be telling you where to read the open API specifications. Uh, if you open my GitHub link, which I have shared, uh, you can uh, when you scroll down, you can see that uh, I have mentioned the docs that is uh, that you need to refer in order to access the open api specification and then status codes i'll explain what are the status codes that is uh, most commonly used in our uh, uh, let's say in day to day life uh, as a developer what are the status code that we most commonly encounter and uh, what is crud it is not crud it is called as crud uh, crud is nothing but create retrieve update and delete uh, you can take any kind of application. Uh, for example, let's take Amazon. Amazon is a CRUD application. How you can ask? I'll tell you. Uh, you are retrieving your uh, uh, shopping uh, history from the database and you are updating your cart and you are deleting your uh, uh, orders when it is placed. And if you want to create an order, you are just clicking buy now button and you are doing some payment. It is a create application, uh, right? So everything that you want to uh, uh, create will come under a CRUD application. You can even take uh, YouTube, for example. YouTube allows you to uh, upload videos and watch the video which comes under retrieve. And if you type some comments and if you do some likes, it comes under updation. And if you delete some comment or delete the entire video or delete a channel, it comes under uh, deletion operation, right? So this is called as CRUD. And this is um, almost all the applications you can compose it under the uh, CRUD umbrella. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll just uh, quickly uh, tell you what are the open A uh, API specification. So this is the open API specification screen. Uh, I have mentioned the uh, link here. If you can open the uh, link that is uh, Lalita ma'am has shared. 
in the reference link uh, you can see i have mentioned as open api specification i'm just right right clicking it and opening it in a new tab and yeah you can see so if you want to uh, create or develop an api and you don't know how to create a industry level api right so you can uh, watch here of uh, uh, how the data type should be if uh, if the data type is an integer it should be in in 22 uh, 32 form if you want to send some number then it should be in float or double if you want to um uh, send some password then it should be of type string and and so on right and uh, this is called as open api uh documentation open api is the um uh, let's say it is the industry standard uh industry standard specification in order to create your APIs. Uh, for example, uh, let's say, uh, I have mentioned WonderGraph near 4J in my uh, previous example, right? Uh, here, what you will do is, you will uh, import data from your existing API. Let's say you have created a shopping application. You uh, uh, give the uh, uh, give the WonderGraph or uh, near 4J, your shopping applications, API, uh, all the APIs you are providing it, but it was not able to uh, download the data that it wants. Uh, at that time, what happens is uh, you you uh, in the backend you 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 would have not uh, used proper specification. So if you use the proper specification, you can integrate your API worldwide with any kind of applications. So this is one thing that uh, if you want to become a API developer. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a separate uh, job uh, for your mention. If you guys are not aware of it, API developers is also a job where the uh, developer will be knowing everything about the open API standards. And yeah, you guys can look it up uh, later because it is uh, it is a plethora of information to cover in a, a single uh, seminar. So I just uh, gave you guys uh, how to create an object and what are the fields that should be present and all. And yeah, if you want a real-time demo, the real-time demo is uh, just uh, a few uh, slides after. And yeah, uh, uh, coming back, yeah, we'll go with the status quotes. And yeah, before going to the status quotes, I'll also show you how to uh, what are the best practices that you need to follow in order to create an api in order to create an api you should have uh, these uh, requests uh, request status codes uh, present in your backend and uh, i'll i have it uh, in a much cleaner way you don't have to read these and all and uh, yeah if you want to create a uh, backend api and it should be in a best practice and it should be in a clean way then you should uh, definitely check out this article and this article is mentioned as error handling and best practices and the link is in the references section in here yeah i just opened it uh, you guys can also open it uh, later if you want or if you want to you can just uh, do it so yeah and coming back uh, to the slides yeah uh next we'll look at the status codes yeah and uh, this is one of the most important uh thing when you want to uh, develop an api uh let's say um okay uh let's say uh there is a, a ticket that is uh, you are buying a ticket from uh, a bus stand or somewhere else, and the ticket has no information that it belongs to you you won't know about uh, what a ticket is right uh, let's say you are uh, buying a ticket for the movie jailer and you got you receive the ticket but the movie name is not present let's say you uh, buy ticket for uh, let's say openheimer barbie and jailer uh, three of the movies simultaneously you have three tickets in hand but you don't know which ticket belongs to which movie so that is a, a hassle right that is a that will create some problems uh, the same issue will occur in APIs also. Whenever you return something to someone, you have to mention the status code so that the uh, the person who is receiving the status code will know that, okay, 200 is present, then it means everything is successful. Uh, let's say 400 is present, okay, there is some issue on my side. Okay, uh, that is how you should use status code and status codes is one of the most important uh, aspect of uh, developing an API. Uh, should be uh, aware of it if not uh, take a moment and uh, uh, just look at this uh, table i'll i'll explain each and everything of you uh, to you also 
so whatever that is present between uh, 200 to 300 means everything works fine as expected okay uh, let's say uh, the explanation for status quo 200 200 means okay that everything works as expected and everything works smooth in the back end so that means the status quo 200 will be thrown and if it is uh, if you are creating something to the front end uh, then it is uh, mentioned as status quo 201 201 is nothing but uh, let's say you are uh, adding something to your cart and uh, the front end developer don't know whether it is created or not he should know right uh, so in order to uh, explain what happened in the back end to the front end developer you can uh, uh, you provide this code to not one and let's say um, you are deleting something let's say you are uh, deleting something from your cart you don't have to receive anything right but you should know that you didn't receive anything so in order to mention uh, see uh, the front end developer i am I, I have deleted it successfully but you don't have to worry about anything and i don't have anything to send back to you in that case you don't have to send any messages and all just send them a 204 which is understood that there is no content for me to send but whatever you uh, ask me to do that is uh, work fine so that is what 204 means these three uh, status codes are like um, uh, developers uh, love these uh, kind of status code because everything works fine and there comes the nightmare for uh, front end developers so whatever that is present between 400 to 500 comes under the uh, fault of front end developer it is not the back end developers mistake it is a completely a fault of front end developer mistake it say, it says that you have not uh, mentioned something like uh, you are not authorized to access this uh, case like it is not available for me but you have uh, given a wrong url or let's say you have given a wrong request uh, or uh, uh, let's say you have uh, given something that i cannot process uh, you have not uh, read the uh, documentation properly if you want to blame something on the front end developer you can just uh, throw these errors that is 400 to 400 and, um, 499 but uh, not all the numbers uh, mean something uh, some numbers mean something and i have mentioned uh, the most common bad request bad request means uh, you have mentioned uh, everything uh, API, but one or two uh, things are missing. For example, let's say you are uh, uh, sending a data. Again, let's say you are sending something known as uh, data about a water bottle, but instead of uh, liters, you have uh, mentioned as liters. Uh, er and re. There will be an uh, anomaly, right, in British and American English. So the developer will know that, okay, I have made the request correctly, but I have made some silly mistakes in my request. So in those uh, states, 404 will be given. And 401 means unauthorized. Let's say uh, someone, uh, you have a private account in Instagram or Facebook or uh, whatever uh, social media platform that you have. Uh, and I gave, uh, I want to view you, not a... Uh, uh, Let's say I am not your friend, but I want to, uh, uh, to not uh, have access. Right? I should have a right access in order to view your profile. So you can return 401, which means you have used an un uh, uh, credentials in order to access the specific URL. And then 403. 403 means forbidden. Forbidden is nothing but uh, unauthorized means you have uh, no, uh, let's say, you cannot make request to this specific url which means 401 but 403 means you can make the uh, you can make the request but right now you are denied let's say um, okay you are buying uh, something from prime uh, let's say you are uh, buying one year subscription and after one year you you want to access amazon prime what they will do is you have the access to uh, amazon prime but right now we are uh, forbidding your uh, request so in those cases you can return 403 and 404 is a meme material uh, most of the developers would know that 404 means wrong uh, uh, wrong url which means the resource is not found let's say uh, i want to fetch something let's say uh, i'm fg and one two three four five six in amazon there won't be any product right so in those cases you can return 404 
or in other cases let's say um, you have you don't even have an api for uh, retrieving your payments let's say uh, in those cases if someone wants to access to payments there is no uh, back end that is written for payments right so in those cases you can return 404 and uh, 422 is a uh, it is rare uh, but it is actually used uh, i have also came across this one uh, 422 is nothing but uh, here let's say you want to access uh, accept an object instead uh, a person is sending you an array but you have uh, written the uh, a back end code as uh, i want to process the array uh, let's say you are taking some uh, key from the object but uh, it has written an array and you try to access the object but uh, you cannot access that right so in those cases you can return 422 because it is the uh, error that is uh, done by the front end developer right so he have to give you the proper data he have to read your uh, documentation properly so these are the errors that is thrown to the uh, front end developer by the back end developer if you want to become a full stack developer you should know both then there comes the everyone uh, if this thing occurs in the industry everyone goes uh, nuts and bolts uh, like uh, this is the most alarming thing industry that is 500 500 means internal server error it should uh, optimally optimally if you say uh, it should never occur uh, in your production system uh, 500 means uh, everything is uh, smooth in the front end and everything is uh, coded the prop by the front end but in the back end there are some error occurs uh, due, uh, um, the code is logic for example uh, let's say uh, the same example you want to process uh, uh, an array but uh, sorry you want to process an object but the front end developer gave you an array what you should do is you should uh, check whether the given response is an object or not and then you have to uh, send 422 but if you miss two those uh, checks automatically there will become an error in the back end side and you will try to access the key and it will throw an error in the back end and that is known as 500 it is something that is not handled by the back end developer right now and it is an important situation so this is called as 500 and this is the most 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 common uh, uh, let's say most common status code that you will uh, be uh, encountering when you uh, came uh, come into the industry and there comes 503 503 means uh, you don't have to worry about it 503 means the specific resource that uh, uh, the user want to access is not accessible uh, for example you you should have heard something like a uh, facebook is down uh, netflix is down it is not accessible for six years uh, sorry six uh, hours like that so in those uh, situations you can use uh, 503 and uh, this is the responsibility of uh, sre something known as site reliability engineers or uh, i said something you don't have to worry about that part right devops engineer will take care so devops engineer will mostly take care if there is a sre team available in your um, uh, in your company then sre team will take care of these things so these are the status codes that uh, i myself as a developer uh, i encounter uh, in my day to day life and i just wanted to you guys to know that these are the status codes that you should also implement when you create a backend and yeah if you guys have any doubt regarding status codes or if you want any sorts of uh, different example for specific status codes just let me know guys are you with me or uh, okay uh, and someone else post a message that uh, it is clear or should I wait for someone else? It's five o'clock, I guess. Uh, you guys are having your coffee and snacks. It's fine, but you can still uh, watch the session. Yeah, sure then. Um, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, I guess that's it for it. Yeah, okay. Uh, what are the tools which the industry use in our day-to-day -day life? Okay. Uh, first thing is Postman. 
postman is something uh, okay okay postman is something that uh, most of the people uh, are not aware of uh, as a student uh, i want to uh, i will just uh, explain what is a postman if you guys are ready just uh, download postman from their official website or open the postman online tool also because uh, i'll show you a live example of how to use postman also in the later part of uh, the session and uh, the next thing is visual studio code it is the favorite id of most most of the developer id is nothing but an it is an integrated uh, development environment which is used to type code it is like a text editor but with uh, a humongous features like uh, you can uh, change the colors you can uh, run the terminal inside it and you can um, change icons you can uh, make uh, many shortcuts and a lot of thing you can do uh, when someone uh, ask you what is your favorite id just let me uh, let them know that you know visual studio code because if you start using it you will uh, there's no going back and uh, this is just me fanboying for uh, visual studio code and moving on um, node.js is a technology that is used uh, in most of the industry uh, even the startups start using uh, node.js uh, if you want to create a startup or uh, Java, uh, recommend you to start with Node.js because Java has plenty of support, but still, uh, if you want to host it, uh, a headache like uh, your mind will burst. So, uh, in order to uh, hosting containers, if you want to, uh, if you want a worldwide uh, support uh, deployment, then definitely go for Node.js. Node.js is a uh, runtime environment that is used to, to run, for example, our uh, website in a browser, right? Uh, basically, what happens is a browse, uh, JavaScript is running inside your browser. Or opening an application in your mobile phone. Uh, the application is a Java program and uh, the runtime environment is... So Android will uh, compile the JavaScript, uh, sorry, uh, compile the Java or Kotlin code into the application and you are just using it. Uh, likewise, uh, Node.js is a runtime environment for JavaScript code. So a JavaScript syntax is a little bit different from Node.js code, uh, um, where in JavaScript you cannot use uh, require and all. In Node.js you can use those. And yeah, moving on, uh, GitHub, Git, and uh, version control system these are the most 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 important thing that you should learn as a developer uh, yeah if you want to become a developer developer specific uh, tools uh, let's say if you know github uh, you are not a full stack developer but if you are a full stack developer you should definitely know github uh, let's say uh, you are making a file changes uh, let's say you are uh, writing some homework and if you want to update your homework, what you will do? You will create a separate file, but you want the old file also. And you will create create a separate file and you will copy paste the old content and you will change the new content. And you want to change it again. What you will do? You will just uh, copy paste another uh, file and you will create these, right? This is called as versions. There is one version and another version and another version, right? So what GitHub does it? Uh, it, you can use only one set of code, but it will maintain all, all the histories of your code. I'll give you an uh, example on how it works because I have, uh, even yesterday I have uh, created a GitHub uh, repository in order to create this. See, there are 25 commits uh, that I did uh, from yesterday night. And uh, for each commit, you can see that in this, uh, let's say 18 hours ago, I have added these codes and if I want to browse the files 18 hours ago, then I'll be able to do it. How this is possible? This is possible only using Git. I'll use uh, GitHub. Uh, let's say, see, it is uh, changed 18 hours ago, right? So this is how uh, GitHub works. Uh, how I did is, uh, did is uh, I use something called as Git uh, version control language. So here you will add. Um, add the files to the github or push files to github or if you want to uh, clone something you can just uh, type a uh, git clone and then you can just copy this link in your terminal and everything will be downloaded from this repository to your local system so if you want to push something to the uh, cloud system you can just git add dot 
and then git commit and then whatever message that you want to type and then if you type git push all the uh, changes that is uh, present in your local system will be reflected in this uh, area also uh, okay um, if if you have any doubts i'll i'll just clarify you with a simple example uh, let's say i'm making some uh, changes to this readme file readme file is nothing but uh, this is the file this file i have full okay so if i if i put this you can see that uh, this file as that in the file add has been modified so what i will do is git add readme.md which means i have added this file to the uh, uh, to the version control system now commit the and then minus m means message and um I have fixed something, so I'm just typing it out a fix, and I'm going to type it as um, changed read me read me to live. Uh, see, but do git push local loaded. See now you can see it has see the example right uh this is how github works and uh, I, I know this thing and the expression of uh um uh, teaching you github but uh the point is uh you should know how to create a, to uh, create files how to revert a commit and these things you should learn and uh, i'll share uh, more information on how to learn github also Because you develop I'm a developer uh, you have to collaborate you have to uh, face the conflicts and you have to make you have to maintain an, your uh, system locally you become a real uh, and uh, uh, you it uh, there there comes a, a new intern along with us and uh, I don't want to mention a fellow friend of mine. And he said uh, that uh, he knows uh, uh, GitHub very well to the, to the manager. And uh, he uh, just um, uh, typed random com uh, com uh, comments uh, from the online. And he pushed it to the production. And uh, I said that uh, something is a nightmare, right? 500. 20 seconds of pushing been bloated with five and to know how to uh and where uh i'm just uh giving an emphasis on this thing you up with github then that's it uh even your career is at stake um in uh 2022 uh i guess in june i'm not sure Six hours, uh, Facebook has been down and their uh, revenue by $33 billion only because an intern pushed to GitHub the wrong branch. So this is uh, one of the incidents that actually happened uh, because if you do any mistakes in GitHub, it will, it will not cost you uh, uh, thousands or lakhs. It will uh, cost you crores and crores of money. So you guys uh, should know how to use GitHub. And then there comes the NPM uh, package manager. NPM is nothing but node package manager. Uh, you use something called Node.js, right? Uh, which I mentioned. Uh, when you want to, let's say, uh, you want to cook some chicken, but uh, you don't know how to cook a chicken. Plus to think what you can do is you can buy frozen chicken from the market and then you can fry it and then you can eat it you don't have to prepare the masalas or you don't have to uh, do other stuffs right so when it is already pre-paid uh, pre-made uh, why don't you use those stuff so that is where uh, that is where the npm comes into picture so most of the uh, uh, you uh, let's say most of the scenarios that you will uh, end up as a developer you will be 
uh, already uh, having a npm package ready for it for example you want to encrypt a password and decrypt a password you can just uh, use the uh, crypt uh, modify from npm uh, let's say you want to make a request you can use fetch but if you want to uh, make uh, all the error uh, handling by yourself you can fetch itself but what if you don't want to waste time uh, you want someone else to do available now it's available in npm so you can just download the npm package and then you can start using it <laughs> excuse me um, package manager is nothing but uh, it is a library uh where all the existing tools available and all the codes are readily available for you to use uh, for free so that is called as npm uh, you can do what you can do is npm install express or npm install axios or uh, let's say let's say face direction everything is available online in the npm package manager you can just download and you can look their documentation and then you can consume them so this is uh, about the npm and webpack uh, i guess uh, 90% of uh, people who are here uh, are not aware of what a webpack is i'll tell you uh, simple uh, i said that every single language is uh, every single web present in the website is compiled of html css and javascript right but uh, you, i mentioned that something known as frameworks like uh, react or angular that are present but if you want to uh, use those react you have to compile them into something known as html css javascript because uh, our browsers will only languages nothing else it will understand so in order to convert the react to uh, a, a javascript you use something called as webpack webpack is a uh, software it will convert all the frame work related code into simple html javascript and uh, css so this is what a webpack is uh, there are two types of web webpack that is uh, used in the industry worldwide that is babel and the next one uh, rollup rollup and babel. rollup is used by react to, to convert the react script into uh, javascript html and css and babel is used in its industry wide for example uh, facebook is also using babel in order to or roll up their files uh, that the browser can understand so these are the tools that we use in the industry and if you have any other doubts uh, or any other uh, tools uh, you, you know the tool name or if you don't know the usage you can just ask me uh, if i know guys me uh, is there one or two students who can uh, respond Thanks. guys you don't have to worry about uh, anything you can just uh, post it I just i uh, got passed out i have been there in your situation too so you no need to worry about anything you can post it in uh, any language that you want uh, i'll and i'll understand your situation and i'll answer whatever that you want if you uh, found it boring just uh, post it that also i'll make it interesting okay i got one response uh okay suhail sheriff is the only one active i guess and uh, others are uh, i'm not sure whether you're having your tea or coffee uh okay anyway uh have a great time uh i'll move on to the next uh, slide that is a live demo uh what you guys can do is uh go to this github link git slash harish hyphen r slash seminar so you guys can open this link and uh, i'll tell you what to do uh, or you can just follow the instruction that is present in the website itself i have uh, documented everything um, that you need to know and i'll show you a live demo uh, about whatever that we have spoke till now i have ready for you guys to understand 
uh, in order to visually uh, see what you guys uh, have been uh, listening throughout uh, the entire time. Um, did you guys uh, open opened it? Just watch the demo also, then it is fine with me. If you guys want to uh, go along with me, then, then just let me know. I'll just wait for you and uh, I'll parallelly uh, give you the instruction on what to do. Okay, I guess uh, I'll start with the demo. Okay, I got something good to grow. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll start with the demo. The first thing is, um, in order to uh, set up this, um, what you can do is you can just copy this thing and open your terminal. If you don't know how to open your terminal, just type it out as a uh, terminal uh, here or in in the uh, window search, you can type it as a uh, terminal and open the app and navigate to whatever uh, folder that you want and then just paste it. So what it will do is it will download the entire repository and it will uh, go to the specific uh, folder. So this is how you work in a terminal. And uh, if you want to become a full stack developer, uh, there are uh, there is um, a situation that you need to uh, work with the Linux system. So in Linux system, you won't have any mouse uh, mouse pointer and all. Uh, you log into your uh, remote uh, terminal and you have to use only terminal to navigate or uh, execute any anything that you want. So yeah, uh, the first thing you, you can do is git clone and then do cd to the uh, full stack seminar. So I'll just uh, do it here. Actually, I ha already uh, have it set up in my local environment. Uh, as you can see, the backend and a client, everything is already there. Uh, I have already did the uh, Git clone. And uh, as you can see, I'm in the presentation folder, but I want to uh, go to the uh, CD full stack seminar. Order. So I just copy this command and I'll paste it. And you can see, okay, uh, I'll give LS. And there are these, yeah, okay. I'm already inside the folder, so no worries. I don't have to uh, CD into this in a folder. And yeah, as you can see, there are uh, two um, folders that is present, the client folder and the backend folder. Uh, in order to uh, navigate to the client, I'll just show you how to navigate to the client. Okay. Uh, there in your terminal, you have to type CD and then client uh, or else you can just CLI and then hit the tab button. The tab button is a auto uh, complete and you can just type it as npm install. What it will do is, um, it will look for a, a package.json file and uh, that I need Axios library, React library and uh, web vitals and other testing libraries. I have mentioned these as dependencies. It will uh, look for the package.json and it will look for the dependencies and it will download all the dependencies. I give npm install. And I'm going to type as uh, npm start. Uh, okay. npm start. Uh, what this will do is it will start my uh, uh, React uh, folder or React application. Um, uh, if you use uh, something else like uh, okay mm, i'll stop my backend server and yeah okay my uh, local host 3000 was already open but i have nothing here to see right so this is uh, called as empty state thing but the front end only is working now i want to uh, uh, start my backend in order to fetch data from the database. So what I'll do is uh, cd to my backend. Uh, cd means change directory, if you don't know. And uh, I, I'll do, do a node mon, node mon index.js. Node mon is a library. As I said, it is an NPM package. NPM package is nothing but it will have pre-written code that you can, uh, in order to make, uh, um use those functions so what i did is whenever i make some changes it will restart my server automatically what it is i am just starting my server with node.js 
and I am starting the server with the file name as index.js. You can see this is the index.js file that I am uh, referring to. So in the next 10 or 20 minutes, we will go through everything that is present in this uh, um, backend file. And uh, this is how a simple backend can be start up and se uh, set that. And yeah, if I refresh this, uh, uh, as you can see, the um, backend was not up a uh, few minutes before and it is looking like this. I started my backend here, refresh my screen. You can see that everything, uh, it has fetched all the data from the database. So how to create a database, right? Uh, you need to have a database that uh, uh, I have provided all the, um, uh, let's say, uh, all these in the, in here itself, as you can see, if you go to the backend and if you open this queries.ql, uh, the entire thing is present here. So the same queries. So if you want to change your database password, you can just uh, drag this. And if you click this button, uh, it will execute your um, query. That is, uh, we are trying to alter the user uh, usernames uh, credentials where at root at localhost should be changed to the password that is mentioned. You can mention whatever password that you want. You can change it to Harish or your name also. So for now, I am sticking with password itself because, okay, pass. Okay, so for now I'm sticking with password because in my Node.js backend that is present here. Uh, we'll come to the Node.js code, don't worry. And uh, in order to create a database, you just have to uh, execute this line, which means create database test. Uh, this is a MySQL workbench. If you don't have uh, installed one, uh, you have you can go through the tutorials online. And if you have uh, my uh, MySQL PHP admin, or uh, if you have XAMPP server, uh, everything will work fine. Uh, the queries are the same. Uh, you can just uh, create a database, and then you have to use the database to create a table. So. Uh, you have to execute this thing that is to use the test and uh, for creating a table you can just create as test.books which means uh, inside the test database i want to create a table named says booked so uh, sorry books so it has an id which is a primary key which i have mentioned earlier in the video and uh, it has a title and the title should be within 45 uh, characters and the price should be an integer and the description should be uh, in 256, 255 characters long. And uh, there is a cover. Cover is nothing but the image URL, which you are seeing here, right? Um, here, as you can see, this is the cover image that is present. So these things you can uh, mention and you can execute this thing. Uh, I'll just uh, quickly run through it uh, to alter the password, to create a database, to to test a database and to create a table. And then uh, in order to select all the um, entries in your table, you can just uh, execute this. As you can see, I have ID 8, 10, and 11. And I have these three books. And as you can see, uh, here, uh, book 1, book 2, book from Postman. See book one, book two, and book from Postman. Everything is present here. Uh, you might know, uh, you may just wonder that uh, they, it is present in the database, then how it is possible to uh, render in the front end, right? So in order to uh, get the data from the database, you have to do it only through the backend. So here comes our backend. This is the core part of today's session. And if you guys uh, missed out the previous uh, uh, there with me this is the most important and crucial part that you have to know uh, because uh, everything that i have mentioned i have implemented it um, here in the code and you will learn about the best practices that are uh, used in the industry and uh, here uh, i'm using an express library express library is nothing but uh, it is uh, let's say you are going to a railway station and you are waiting for a train but uh, you know that uh, the chennai train will be available in the first platform and you are waiting in the fir first platform but uh, there are uh, two platforms available, but only one track available, right? Uh, either the one track could uh, change to left side or the right side. So this thing is called as routing. Uh, this routing is done by uh, Express Framework. Uh, for example, uh, let's say the train one has to go to the platform one and train to platform two. When the train one comes, the uh, route is it will automatically change the track to 
platform one so that the train will directly go to the platform one so the same thing happens so whenever any request comes here uh, it will see whether the request is of get or uh, uh, put or delete or put request there is a get request and uh, there is a delete request and there is a put request but you can see right here i have mentioned the same route books slash colon id same route uh, books slash colon id but uh, how will the uh, back end know and the front end know whether it is a updation right so in order to uh, carry out those uh, you can mention as delete and put in the back end and as well as in the front end you have to mention the same so i'll quickly give you an intro whether uh, how to connect to the database we are using the express library and uh, taking an inch instance to a variable named as app and uh, we are using uh, course, course is nothing but cross origin resource sharing which means if you want to send data from http or https to http you should use cross origin resource sharing it is a security feature that is uh, available in javascript and uh, uh, all the languages uh, unsecured one and https means it is a secure http so that uh, let's say you have a uh, let's say you have a jewelry shop and someone uh, enters with a mask you won't allow them right to be secure so in order to uh, check them you will uh, appoint a security guard and then you will check them whether he is a good uh, uh, he is a legitimate customer or not so the same thing happens in cars so i'm just uh, telling the app to use the cars as a security so that it will uh, check the incoming request and it will uh, check whether it is a legitimate request or it has any suspicious request so this uh, about uh, car and uh, we are creating a mysql connection using mysql dot create connection the mysql is uh, npm uh, uh, package uh, that is available online uh, in order to uh, quickly connect with your mysql local databases and uh, you can uh, type mysql dot create connection and then you can mention your host url here and your uh, user here uh, as you can see in the here it is the host and it is the you and the password is password and the database name is test and you can uh, change these value accordingly you can also change these values for database so this is how you create a simple connection with your database uh, why i am telling this is uh, companies like presidio and uh, mr cooper these companies come for our campus and they'll ask us to create a full stack application and they'll give you time like 5 uh, hours or 2 hours you can refer whatever you want uh, and you can use whatever resources you want but we want a full stack application in the end of the day so if you were able to do it uh, let's say you choose javascript to do it it is actually tedious process you have to download the drivers and all so if you want to quickly uh, place the time and grab the placement then you can uh, definitely go for uh, these uh, libraries so this will quickly create a connection to your database so if you want to check whether your uh, application is working then add that get which means uh, it says that where i get an empty slash request and that request is get request i will json with the response like this uh, i'll show you a demo let's say i have the root query. this is the postman uh, application that and uh, here using uh, this application you can just uh, try out to uh, query your uh, backend and you can test all your apis that you have created so if i send see uh, it has our uh, backend has sent a response that is hello arish up and running perfectly if you don't believe that it is actually working let's say i am removing all the code here you can see right see my uh, server has restarted and i'm going to send the request again you can see hello arish it has changed the content has changed right so this is how you check whether your uh, application is or not so this is the first step in order to create a backend and then let's say you want to get all the books from the database what you can do is select star from books you can execute this query as i already executed here you can see see i executed this and i got this response right so the same thing we are going to do but using this db dot query we have initialized the db uh, uh, variable here using these uh, credentials and what this will do is uh, when you give a query it will execute the query against those credentials so it what this basically does is it will execute the select star from books uh, query 
to the uh, test database uh, with the password this and host and username as uh, if there is any error uh, present it will console log the error and it will set the status as 500 because this is the error that has happened in the back end this is not due to the front end uh, right so you have to send a 500 request and this is the message format that you should uh, always use whenever you are designing a backend. So whenever you are uh, throwing, it should be in this format only. Uh, it should contain an error keyword and message keyword. Error should be of internal server error, this specific keyword. And message should be of whatever message that uh, arises due to the error. And if there is no error present, then I will just send the JSON data but i haven't mentioned 200 status code here why because by default what uh, uh, node.js does is uh, whenever you send a request from the back end it is treated as 200 response only so do you, you don't have to mention it you don't have to mention it explicitly so the get all books i'll just quickly uh, um, uh, execute this api see you can see uh, 8 is present and 10 is present and 11 is also present so this thing also happened in the front end uh, i'll just uh, right click and this is called a uh, develop developer console you just have to right click and click on inspect whatever uh, browser you have you don't have to worry right click and then click on inspect here go to the network tab uh, here uh, just uh, i'm just going to refresh and you can see that the same response i would have get uh, got from the back end see the same response you guys can see right uh, this is what uh, postman is used you can just simulate whatever that you are going to do in the front end by using this uh, simple application you just have to mention uh, the url and then hit send and if you want to give a post request you can change those according i guess you guys uh, understand what is uh, how to uh, run the backend and how to get all the data from the backend so I'll tell you one thing. This is one of the important thing that the students are not aware is whenever you create API to get all the entities, let's say get all purchases, get all, uh, uh, get all movies or get all books. If you uh, mention something as get all, then you should definitely create another API to get a particular book or get a particular purchase because uh, let's say you want to update only this book let's say i want to update my book uh, one name to uh, new name new updated name let's say i want to update a new update see i have updated it but uh, did you notice that these uh, are already populated you don't know how these got populated right these actually populated by i have mentioned the books and then I have mentioned a number, the ID of the book. So whenever you create a get all something, let's say get all books, get all reviews, get all movies, you should definitely create another API to get a specific movie, get movie by ID, get review by ID, get book by ID. You should mention uh, this in your API. So that that is get book by ID. So this is the get request and I'm going, I'm trying to get the book eight details. If I send the request, you can see, see the book one new update. I got it, right? So uh, uh, by this, you can ensure that the data in the database and data through the postman and data that is present in the front end also is the same. And the next thing that I want to mention is uh, how to mention a, a specific book. I, I have shown you the example, but have the code. So whenever you want to pass some numbers or any parameter uh, pass it with the and then a keyword i'm if you want to access it you can access it like this request dot parameter dot id so this is how you uh, get the id and what i'm doing is uh, select star from books where id equal to question mark so why am i uh, mentioned it as question mark is uh, because when you give uh, two entities, uh, let's say two parameter to the query, the first one will be the same uh, query. The second one will be replaced by the question mark. Let's say you have two question mark and uh, two entities in the second array. 
it the first entity will be replaced by first question mark the second entity will be uh, replaced by second question mark which will be uh, looking here in the post query uh, let's say there is only one question mark that is present but here i am mentioning all the values the values are title uh, description price and then cover what i'll do is i'll get the request dot body dot title uh, description dot body dot price and then the first question mark will be uh, corresponding to title which is mentioned here the second will be description which is mentioned here the third will be price which is also mentioned here in the uh, consecutive order so that uh, the the final query will look like insert into books title description price cover values and then it will be followed like book one uh, uh, description one and then price uh, uh, let's say 200 rupees comma uh, the url so th this is how the url will look like you can uh, simply type the url in the database also but this is how you do it in the back end way let's say uh, it is a create request right uh, you have created something but you don't have to send something right so in those cases you can mention the status as 201 which i have already mentioned let's say i am getting something and the status is 200 see i am getting something the status is 200 I'm getting something and this is 200. Let's say I'm going to add something, add something new. Let's say the, the price should be 355, uh, sorry, 33. Okay. So I'm going to name this book as uh, live, live presentation. Uh, there are some typo which we'll be using for the later. And the description is... Um, uh, some description right so if i do a post request what kind of uh, response can i expect i will expect a 200 ex a response but uh, 201 is also fine because you have created something but you have not uh, given something right so if i send see it is uh, giving me 201 which means created uh, you are creating something and the response is also 201 created so that is how you should use uh, meaningful names. Uh, if you guys uh, need the slide, uh, you can just take a screenshot or the slide is also available. You can just uh, go to the seminar and uh, right click here and open a new tab. And this will be available uh, online only. You can uh, uh, access it whenever you want or you guys can take a screenshot or you can uh, get it from ma'am. And yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, this is how a post request works and uh, let's say uh, there is some uh, uh, something that is uh, similar see here the books is also um, okay let's say the delete is also in the similar pattern and the update is also in the similar pattern the url is the same uh, i'll show the example also see uh, books slash some number and here also books uh, see here also books slash some number it is same but how can we distinguish whether it is a delete or not so you have to mention it here if you want to delete something then what express will do is express will all the uh, similar uh, endpoints and then it will search for the uh, delete uh, api in the back end and then it will invoke this thing so what we are doing is yeah, we are basically getting the data and where id equal to the id that is passed and if you execute this query, the specific entry will be deleted from the database. So here I am trying to delete the data, uh, delete something from the database. And uh, here, if, if some internal error occurs, then uh, I'll send us internal error and I'll send the error message also. Uh, let's say I have deleted something, but I have nothing to send back to the front end, right? So let's uh, delete something and see. Uh, before that, I'll quickly uh, show you my. Uh, last insertion also is available okay i'll delete something using this uh, but i'm not sure what is the book id okay this is the book id is 12 so i'm going to delete that uh, 12th book there is no content to uh, <coughs> there is no content to return because we have deleted something right you have deleted uh, something on the uh, database and i have nothing to tell you but uh, whatever you did was uh, perfectly fine. So that is that is why we return 204 and no content. Uh, these are the standard codes that I uh, ask you guys to uh, 
use when you guys uh, become a backend developer because uh, i have seen uh, some people who uh, lower their quality of uh, code uh, because of not using uh, such uh, meaningful contents even in the industry so i got, uh, i want you guys not to be uh, those guys uh, i want uh, you guys to use appropriate um, um, appropriate uh, error codes whenever you design a backend and then i'm trying to update a book um, where uh, the first uh, four question marks will be uh, replaced by the title and the second one will be description, third one will be price and the fourth one will be cover and then the last one will be book ID where the ID equal to the specific ID that I mentioned. Let's uh, test it out. Um, after refreshing, I deleted the book so the deleted uh, book has gone. Let's say a book from Postman is there, right? I'm going to um, book updated. If I click update, see the book name is updated. And if I um, get all books, we can see that the third book uh, title is already got updated. So this is how you guys can uh, create a backend. And yeah, uh, this is uh, this is the port that you are going to listen to. Uh, let's say if I want to change it to 3005, I can also do that. But uh, here I have to change the endpoint also. So this is called as a host endpoint. And whatever that is present after this number are known as endpoints. So yeah, that's about the backend guys. And uh, uh, the queries are available in the uh, SQL queries file. Uh, if you guys want to open the queries file, uh, it is available here. You can open it here. And if you want to uh, uh, open the in file, it is available in the index.js. And you guys can see the code here. It is mentioned. Uh, and it is available publicly uh, even if you uh, forget something don't worry i have mentioned proper uh, uh, comments above everything and you guys just have to uh, see the code and just uh, see the comment and you will have an idea of what the code does and not only for the backend file i have mentioned everything in the front end also and also for the uh, queries.sql uh, for each and every queries i have mentioned uh, I have mentioned the uh, comment so that you can you guys can understand. Uh, I want uh, uh, someone who are who is uh, genuinely interested in full stack development or backend development definitely uh, try to clone my repository. Uh, try to uh, recreate this thing. If you have any doubts, uh, just ping me. Uh, I'll drop my uh, contact in the end. Um, I'll definitely help you guys to uh, build it quickly. And one thing you guys will. Uh, uh, no, uh, you, you guys will uh, get the real knowledge. So everything that you need to do is mentioned here, uh, step by step. You just have to copy and then paste, and then copy and then paste. You can uh, read the instruction on how to run this. And for running the front end, you can open this link. For running the back end, you can just open this link. Uh, I'll just show you. See, uh, nothing is mentioned. So I'm getting hello, Arish. Let's say I want all the books. Uh, books see i got all the books let's say i want only the books uh 11 see i got only the 11th book uh everything that you do here is a get request you cannot do a post request or a delete request uh, from here but you can uh, developer console and uh, through the postman uh, api also so in order to uh, get these uh, apis you don't have to worry how to import it uh, you can just uh, right click and open the open this in new tab and copy everything that is present and uh, go postman and click here import and then paste whatever that you have copied and it will ask you to import as a copy or replace for you it will ask you to import you can just uh, uh, click the import button and then you will get all these collections you can just um, uh, play around with it and you guys can uh, create your own backend also you can create your own um uh, get request ports request or uh, anything that you want and uh, i have also mentioned the open api specification that you guys have to learn uh, if you want to create uh, more apis and uh, the error handling best practices is also mentioned and yeah as you can see uh, there are some uh, more uh, uh, error conditions also there uh, error codes also present 
and last what are the response code and its meaning the link is also there this is called as uh mdn docs mdn docs is a docs uh that uh, most of the developers use uh this is um, basically uh, developed by mozilla developer uh, network um uh, uh, what uh, why we trust this is um because um uh, during the intern uh, during the internet evolving uh, evolving period itself mozilla was there uh, there were the um they they were like um they were having uh, about a 90% stake uh, in the whole uh, web browser market before the arrival of uh, 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 chrome uh, they had a mozilla firefox uh, before um, let's say 2010 and all uh, the default uh, browser that we had was Mozilla Firefox. So, uh, in the legacy system, uh, since they developed everything that is required to uh, develop the environment, uh, develop the internet environment, uh, we uh, as a developer have to uh, look out for uh, Mozilla developer docs. And you can learn a lot from here. Uh, you can successful redirection, client error, server error, as I said, right? So everything is mentioned here. Uh, if you want to learn in depth and you want to learn more, you can just uh, look here. Um, I guess uh, that's about the session. And if you guys have any doubts, uh, definitely uh, post it in the chat box or you can just unmute and speak. Uh, these are my um, if you want uh, personal guidance or if you have uh, face any issues when when uh, 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 creating a clone of my project, then please uh, ping me in any of the modes. Uh, I'll be available in LinkedIn, Instagram. If you uh, need my um, uh, WhatsApp number also, you can uh, get it from your account. Yeah. Mm. If you guys have any doubts, uh, please post it in the chat. Students, if you have any doubts, you can ask him. Okay, I, I got a question about pipelines. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so here, uh, I'll I'll tell you a basic understanding of what is uh, CACD is. Um, uh, basically, you you pipeline industry we mention it as CAC CAC integration and continuous development. Uh, let's say. Um, I have mentioned a blunder about Facebook that an intern pushed something to the GitHub and uh, uh, Facebook was not working for six hours, right? That is, uh, that happened. Pipelines is nothing but it will uh, uh, run on a Kafka environment. Kafka is nothing but message uh, queue. Uh, a message queue is something, let's say, um, okay, uh, your... Uh, um, Okay, you are, you are waiting in a queue for uh, buying something, right? If you just stand in the queue, you know that your place is going to be uh, buying the item that you want, right? Uh, that is uh, similar to a message queue. If you post something to the message queue, you can expect that it will be definitely uh, executed. So this is about the message queue. Uh, so to understand uh, how a CACD works, you should know a little bit about message queue. That's why I uh, gave a, a brief introduction. And okay, so whenever you push something to the GitHub, what happens is uh, your commit message will be uh, added here. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, your commit message will be added here. So uh, I want to do some action. Whenever it's a commit message that occurs, I wanted to uh, take the commit message and push to, uh, let's say, I want to uh, Node.js package or I want to uh, deploy something to the Azure uh, platform. I can do it in this page, in this action page. So basically what happens is whenever you push something, uh, there is an uh, observer waiting for uh, you to commit something. So whenever it is pushed, then the observer takes the information and then it does some actions. So that is, uh, this is the uh, basic outline of uh, what is a GitHub pipeline means. Uh, in industry, we mention it as continuous integration and continuous development. So uh, from the name itself, you can, um, you can get an idea about, you'll be developing continuously. You can just push your code. You don't have to worry about anything. It will be continuously deployed. It will be continuously uh, published to your uh, whatever. So this is the brief explanation of what is a, a GitHub pipeline. Uh, I guess you understand it. If you have any doubts, just please post it.
Ah, okay. So uh, Ashwin Kumar has asked about uh, the resources to learn authentication and authorization in web development. Okay. So you can just uh, search for OAuth and uh, I'll tell you. Okay, just search for OAuth and uh, you can go to this website that is OAuth 2.0 um, and uh, see the docs that is mentioned. Um, okay, so here you can learn about uh, OAuth and uh, how it is used and uh, about authorization. Yeah, authentication authorization both will be uh, present here. So you can learn it here or if you want uh, to learn more, uh, I, I have um, Toho APIs. I have personally worked with these APIs. So I'm suggesting you this one. And uh, let's say I'm going to books API, some, some API. So if you click on OAuth and overview, so you can uh, learn these docs. These docs will give you an idea about how we use OAuth and how uh, industry is using OAuth. It is publicly available. Uh, it is not uh, like, uh, uh, it is not classified information. It is public, uh, publicly available. You can just uh, follow these uh, patterns and you can just uh, learn about authorization and authentication. And uh, there is something you should know about scopes and it will be mentioned here, I guess. Um, authorization scope, yeah. Yeah, here you can see these are the scopes, uh, scopes and settings and all. Uh, you can just go through these and uh, import their examples and you can try it out on your own in order to create a refresh token, um, uh, let's say refresh token, ID, client secret and all. So yeah, what you have to do is just search for Zoho APIs, Zoho APIs and just uh, hit on the first link and uh, select any uh, want to learn about the OAuth, right? So in the top right corner, you can click on the OAuth and click on the overview and you can just learn about OAuth. So I guess this answers your question and I'll take the next question. <clears throat> uh, Anna, you know, Versal, right? There is a feature to deploy any GitHub project. Does it configure pipeline on its own behind the scenes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so hey, actually, uh, that's a good question. And uh, Vercel, uh, the, the backbone of uh, Vercel itself is uh, uh, using CICD for uh, uh, hosting. So whenever uh, you will be uh, giving your repo and then you will be uh, authorizing uh, with OAuth. So what they do is they will get your uh, access token uh, for uh, GitHub. So in the backend, what they will do is they will send <clears throat> they'll send the API request to uh, GitHub Actions. And then whenever there is some uh, commit made from your side, uh, the message queue will send a message to uh, Vercel and Vercel will receive the message. And accordingly, Vercel will uh, download your current, uh, uh, let's say your current uh, GitHub uh, repo, uh, GitHub public uh, folder. And it will, uh, uh, it will bundle the folder uh, with whatever specification that you are given and then it will host it separately. So this is how um, Vercel works. And uh, any other questions? Imagine we are building and deploying an application. When should I opt Kubernetes over no normal deployments? Or not? Okay. Uh, Kubernetes is nothing but uh, let's say uh, you want someone to, um, let's say you are uh, building a platform like skill rack or lead code. Uh, you want someone to execute something, right? So for each person, uh, let's say he will have a Java, a Java environment and someone will have. So these environments cannot be, um, uh, cannot have a, uh, um, let's say, uh, these environment cannot have a, um, a common goal. So in those uh, situation, you can definitely opt for Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is uh, uh, called as a container. Uh, a container is nothing but it is a uh, virtual system which contains your uh, current configuration that you um, that you give to the machine. It will spawn the machine and it will do the operations and it will die. Uh, it will not um, uh, use your uh, user thread. It will spawn in a different thread and it will run and then it will uh, destroy. But uh, if you want to normal deploy. Uh, I'll give you uh, some examples on where to use Kubernetes. You are uh, getting a file from the uh, user and the file can be of any type. Then you should opt for Kubernetes. 
and if you are uh, executing codes then you should offer kubernetes and if you want to uh, process some data in the back end uh, let's say uh, it cannot be done everything will be dynamic for example the user itself is uh, giving you a code and you have to use those code to do some operations uh, in those situations you can uh, opt for kubernetes but uh, for example you are uh, having some simple websites or some simple uh, applications for example your uh, uh, our uh, uh, bookstore right uh, you can use a normal deployment and for other sorts of uh, uh, for for any simple application you can de definitely go for normal deployment in cloud but uh, whenever you want the user to specify the tech stack and the user to specify the code or the user is uploading some files then you can opt for kubernetes uh, anything else from anyone else? Uh, I'll take up the question. Or if you have any doubts in the previous answers, please let me know. Okay. As a backend uh, and an API beginner, what should I? What should we do, Anna? I'm not much aware about the backend things. What I know is the MySQL basics. I'm not even able to uh, choose which kind of backend to use for my projects. Not just for the present sake, but for the long term progress what should i do as my next step now okay uh, for the long term you don't have to worry about your tech stack because whatever your company uh, uses you can just adapt to it uh, i'll do one thing about software development software development is not about using a specific tech stack and becoming a master of it you should be able to learn whatever you want currently and you should be able to adapt uh, let's say you know java and you your company moves to Node.js, you should definitely move to Node.js. You, you cannot say that I will only use Java. Uh, I see uh, most of the um, students using only Python. Uh, Anna, I know only Python, Anna. Uh, uh, I am very good in Python. Uh, can I use Python in interviews? No, it's not like that. Uh, a software developer is someone who can uh, learn whatever uh, language that is uh, given to them. So that is the uh, answer to what uh, you should do in your future and uh, for now uh, i will suggest you to stick with node.js because node.js is easy to pick up for a beginner and it is uh, simpler to set up and it is also simple to host uh, but if you take uh, java in the other end uh, if you want to uh, develop something with java uh, industry actually likes java but still uh, as a beginner if you want to do something you, know, you will uh, face a lot uh, I have been a developer of Java and also Node.js. When compared, I will definitely, uh, um, uh, I'll definitely suggest you to go with Node.js only for uh, connecting uh, MySQL also. If you have um, any doubts on how to uh, develop a backend, you can just um, uh, just uh, clone this website, uh, clone this repo, and uh, read through the uh, code. And I have uh, uh, mentioned all the comments. And if you have any doubts, you can also. Uh, ask me if I'm free, I'll definitely uh, text you back. And uh, I don't think I have missed any points. If I have missed any, please let me know. Anna is MongoDB being used in industry. Any idea on it? Uh, I have expertise only in MongoDB Atlas. Yeah, okay. Uh, MongoDB is used, but only in startups and also uh, MNCs with uh, very big umbrella. Uh, let's say uh, Google. Uh, Facebook, Meta, and those uh, uh, billion level scales uh, industry use MongoDB. And um, in Zoho, we don't use a MongoDB. We use uh, only a SQL database. Scale, uh, scalable, like uh, even if you want to serve uh, two to three crores of data, it is uh, possible through SQL and the SQL performance is very more. Uh, in Zoho, we uh, we uh, give priority more to uh, security and speed uh, than anything else. So we chose uh, uh, MySQL only. So, but uh, if you if you are thinking that uh, knowing MongoDB is an added advantage, it is definitely an added advantage. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, not knowing MySQL. You can easily learn in three to four days when if you have knowledge in MongoDB. So don't worry about it. Um, MongoDB is uh, used in industry, but only in um, a very big industry and industry who are in current trend and uh, startups which are uh, started in the last few years, they use MongoDB for the database.
because okay um i work in the zoho catalyst uh, my team is zoho catalyst so if you want to why catalyst is uh, better uh, we uh, we provide you with a good price to performance ratio and uh, you can uh, even uh, know the news as like uh, someone suicides because uh, they used the amazon credit uh, amazon web services uh, they uh, they have uh, left the ec2 instance on and uh, build like uh, two crore something uh, these things will not happen in catalyst you get what you pay for you have to pay only for what you use you can just uh, schedule the restart of the machines you can uh, you can uh, take the tires you can um, mention whether you want a high tire machine or low tire machine or even medium tire machine so that doesn't matter so this is the advantage of using the uh, catalyst and uh, uh, in catalyst there is a zero data leak uh, that is uh, that is been done in the past history uh, so you can uh, uh, you can just uh, um, uh, search up the other uh, uh, AWS, DynamoDB, or uh, uh, Facebook's uh, GraphDB, and all. So you can just uh, search whether their data got leaked or not. They have their data have leaked at least once in their um, uh, product lifecycle. But in Catalyst, there is no such data leak that have happened uh, that have happened uh, since the uh, development of the product. So that is the one thing that is uh, advantage over uh, web services. And can you suggest me a beginner friendly platform to deploy simple web apps? Okay, if you want to uh, uh, deploy simple web apps, you can go to uh, Catalyst, Zoho Catalyst, obviously, because uh, I work in I work in Zoho Catalyst, so I can provide support. But uh, for a complete beginner, I, I would uh, still suggest you to go with Firebase. Firebase is a, in Firebase, you just have to type four, only four commands. That is Firebase init, and then Firebase uh, login, and then uh, npm run build, and then Firebase deploy. If you run these four commands, then it is uh, like 100% uh, simple than any other app to deploy. So you just have to uh, bundle your project, Firebase deploy, and you will get an uh, application. So for example, I can just uh, open iShardWeb.app. Uh, it is my application. It is also opened in uh, Firebase only. And you get to uh, nice... Uh, 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 let's say fancy looking uh, uh, domain name. Uh, you can just uh, mention it as Ashwin Kumar that web dot app, and it will be mostly available. Or you can mention it as Ashwin Kumar dot R uh, or uh, let's say Ashwin Kumar dot P dot web dot app. Uh, that is also available. You can mention it as Ashwin Kumar iPhone P dot web dot app. So it will be available. Uh, you don't have to worry about buying any domain names and all. I have been using this for like uh, two three years. And still, I haven't paid any uh, bill to uh, Firebase. So, and Firebase is fast and by Google. You can uh, definitely rely on this one. Uh, before this, I have used Heroku, but Heroku is now paid. But uh, so I don't, uh, I will not recommend it. Uh, why I will recommend this over Catalyst is in Catalyst, you will you will not get these fancy names. You have to pay for the fancy name. So if you are a developer, uh, if you are a beginner and also you want a faster and uh, a fancy website, then I'll definitely uh, suggest you to go with the Firebase. If you want to uh, uh, host your backend, then definitely go with Catalyst because ca in Catalyst, uh, backend hosting is free. Uh, in your development environment, only if you move it to production environment, it is costly. Uh, it is uh, it costs. So you can def definitely go for backend with Catalyst, and for frontend you can go with Firebase. And anyone else, if you have any sorts of doubt in cloud computing, also you can ask because uh, I am a cloud. Uh, I work in a cloud uh, cloud environment, so. Students, anybody else having any questions? Students? If you guys want to contact me, just uh, take a screenshot. Uh, this is my Instagram handle and this is my mail and this is my portfolio. And you can also uh, text me on LinkedIn and I'll help you uh, whenever you have any doubts.
students, if you don't have any questions, we'll wind up the session now. Thank you so much, Harish. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have taken excellent and complete session on uh, API design. Okay, even uh, we won't uh, be preparing uh, the session like this. Uh, uh, you have taken your uh, full time and you have taken uh, uh, this much effort uh, as well as you explained so uh, clearly to our students. Uh, uh, so that uh, the session will be very much helpful for our students as well as I will post a recorded uh, link to the other students too so that uh, they will uh, use whenever they require uh, given the session uh, is uh, so much uh, helpful for me too. Okay, you have uh, taken uh, such an excellent session. You have also shared uh, the coding and uh, in the presentation, everything, uh, whatever you explained was clearly that. Okay, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Harish. Sure, ma'am, sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, thank you. Whenever we require uh, the same kind of help, uh, you have to extend your hands, ma'am. Uh, whenever it is possible. Yeah, sure, ma'am. It is possible for you to come to college to conduct uh, mock interviews for our students. Uh, uh, you can uh, you know, please come. Okay. If my ass still is not a barrier, I'll definitely come, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, ma'am.